Beginning in our child's pose with our big toes together, knees wide, forehead down, and stretch your arms out in front of you. Press your hips back towards your heels, but at the same time, you're reaching the arms away. And then just connect to your breath here, kind of checking in with your body in this first child's pose. Finding your ujjayi breath, breathing in and out through the nose. Slightly constricting the back of your throat so you can hear the sound of your breath. And work on making your inhales and exhales even longer so you can use that breath throughout the practice. So it's okay if sometimes you're a little bit faster or slower than my cues, or if you need to take breaks, you can always come back to this pose. Child's pose is your resting pose. Now we'll take a little variation. Walk your hands to the right side of the mat and place your left hand on top of the right. So you feel that stretch through the left side of your body. And then we'll walk it to the left side, right hand on top of the left, taking that stretch the other way. Now let's come up to center to a tabletop position. Hands right under the shoulders, knees under the hips. Inhale, drop the belly, arch your back and gaze up, cow pose. And as you exhale, tuck your chin in, round your back for cat, pushing the floor away. Inhale as you arch, warming up your spine. Exhale as you round. And one more time. Inhale to arch. Good. Exhale to round. And find a neutral spine. Step your left leg to the side. Gate pose. Stand up on your right knee. Take your left hand on the left leg and reach your right arm over your ear, creating that side body stretch. Good, switch sides as you come up, put your left knee down, step your right leg to the side, right hand on the right leg and reach that left arm over. Good, now back to your hands and knees, tabletop. Thread the needle, peel the right arm up, and thread it through. Put your head down. Walk your left hand straight forward if you can. And then from there, if you want to crawl it, you crawl it a little bit over to the right to go a little deeper. Walk it back in. Come back to tabletop. Reset. Switch sides. Peel the left arm up. Thread the needle. Thread it through. Put your head down. Walk your right hand forward. Maybe crawl it a little to the left. And back to your tabletop, reset there. Now connecting to your core, extend your right arm forward and your left leg back, opposite arm and leg. Exhale, knee to elbow, crunch it in as close as you can get it. Inhale as you extend it out and reach. Good, exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale to extend. One more time, knee to elbow. Now extend it out, hold it, or bend your leg and see if your right hand can grab that left foot and kick it back and find just a little bit of a back bend there. Still balancing though. Good, stretch it out and then just place it down. Switching sides, left arm forward, right leg back, find your balance. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, extend it out. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale to extend, and one more time, knee to elbow. And then either extend and hold or bend the leg. See if you can find that foot and kick it back for that back bend. Good, stretch it out, place it down, and then come into your first down dog for your down dog. Your feet are hips width distance. And that first one, it always feels good to move around a little bit, bend one leg at a time, stretch your calves, hamstrings, maybe bend one elbow at a time. Just kind of check in. See how your body's feeling today at the beginning of your practice. Shrugging those shoulders away from the ears, pushing the chest back, pressing more weight into your heels. Inhale forward just to a high plank. So in your high plank, double check that your shoulders, elbows, wrists are stacked, your feet are hips width, your body's in a straight line. Now without moving the hands and feet, exhale, lift your hips and push back down dog. And it's okay if the heels don't reach the floor yet. Inhale, glide straight forward, high plank. Exhale, pike your hips up, down dog. One more time. Inhale forward, high plank. Exhale, press back, down dog. 
Walk your feet to meet your hands. Take a few big steps. Ragdoll at the front. Feet hips width. Bend your knees and grab opposite elbows. And really just let yourself hang here. Maybe shake your head. Yes and no. Relaxing the neck. Then swaying a bit side to side as you shift the body weight from the right foot to the left foot. Or also forward and back. Shifting from the ball of the feet to the heels. Release the hands, roll yourself up one vertebra at a time. When you get all the way up to the top, lift the arms up. Your right hand will grab a hold of that left wrist and pull it to the right, creating that side body stretch. And switch, left hand grabs your right wrist, pull it to the left. Good, bring it to center. Interlace the fingers behind your lower back or hold it onto a strap. Open up the chest, bend your knees, fold forward. Keep your knees a little bit bent. We're still just kind of warming things up. See how your chest and shoulders here feel as well. Good, release the hands down. Now take your right foot, cross it all the way behind your left foot and fold over your legs. You can bend the knees, you can have hands on blocks. If your legs are straight, you could try walking your hands to the left side of the mat. Back to center, switch the cross of the feet. So now your right foot is crossed in front and you're folding over the legs or walking the hands a little bit to the right side of the mat. Good, come back to center. Uncross the feet and bring them together. Inhale, lengthen to a flat back. Fingertips can be on the shins or the floor. As you exhale, step back to that high plank. And for our first chaturanga, bring your knees down to the floor. Hug your elbows in and slowly lower all the way down. Now, untuck your toes. So you have the tops of the feet pressing into the mat. Inhale, cobra pose. Just a small back bend coming part way up and then lower back down. Good. Push up to your knees to your modified plank position. Then tuck your toes under and go back to your down dog. So as we start to move through some sun salutations, just keep in mind you can go back to that version at any point in class. Look forward, you can step or hop, both feet up to meet your hands, feet together. Inhale, lengthen to a flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Now use that flat back. Inhale, reverse swan dive all the way up to stand. And exhale, hands come to heart center. Surya Namaskara A, sun salutation A. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, you can step or hop back to your chaturanga from your toes or from your knees. Inhale, either to your first up dog or stay with cobra. If you're an up dog, remember your kneecap should be off the floor. Really engage your legs. Exhale, down dog. Then looking towards your hands, lightly hop or step, both feet up to meet your hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive all the way up to stand. Exhale, hands to heart center. Two more times just like that. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale to lengthen. And then exhale to step or hop back. Chaturanga, low push up. Inhale for your back bend, up dog or cobra. And exhale as you push back to your down dog. Look forward, step or hop, both feet up to meet your hands. Inhale, lengthen, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. One more time, Surya Namaskara A. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, step or hop back to your chaturanga, dandasana, low push up. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. Look forward, hop or step, both feet to the front. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Good, now we add in chair pose and warrior one for our Surya Namaskara B, Sun Salutation B. 
Lift your arms up and then bend your legs for chair pose, Utkatasana. Knees and feet together, sit low. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, hop or step, Chaturanga. This part's the same, same options. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. Now we add on by lifting that right leg up, stepping it between the hands for warrior one. Pivot your left heel flat on the ground, square your hips to the front, both arms straight up to the ceiling. Really bend into that front leg. Exhale the hands right back down to the mat and step back to your chaturanga, low push up. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Other side, lift that left leg up and step it forward between your hands. Warrior one, pivot your right heel flat, square your hips towards the front as best you can, arms straight up to the ceiling. Exhale as you lower the hands back down, step back, chaturanga, low push up. Good, inhale up dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. Look towards your hands, hop or step, both feet up to meet your hands. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. From your fold, bend your knees, chair pose, Utkatasana, lift the arms. Good, press up to stand, hands to heart center. One more time, all the way through. Reach your arms up, bend your legs, Utkatasana, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, hop or step. Chaturanga, low push up. I know it's a lot of chaturangas in the beginning. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. These sun salutations should really help warm you up. Lift the right leg up, step it forward. Warrior one, pivot the back heel down. Virabhadrasana A, square hips. Good, exhale, hands to the floor. Chaturanga, low push up. Inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog. Lift your left leg up, step it forward, warrior one. Inhale, arms up, Virabhadrasana A. Good, exhale, hands back to the mat, Chaturanga, low push up. Inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog. Look forward, step or hop back to the front. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Back to your chair pose. One more time, Utkatasana. And then stand all the way up, hands to heart center. Separate your feet hips width. Roll yourself down. You're gonna take your peace fingers, grab your big toes for Padagustasana. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. You just hang out here. Let the elbows go to the side. Pull yourself towards your legs. If you can't straighten the legs yet, you can still keep them bent. Now release your toes, widen your feet a little bit, malasana, prayer squat, garland pose. Turn your toes out 45 degrees. You can sit on your block if you want. You could also go a little wider with the feet if your heels are not on the ground. Try to use those elbows to press the knees apart, press your chest forward and try to lengthen your spine. You can hold here or open the arms. Right shoulder inside the right knee, right hand on the floor, maybe left arm up. And then back to center, other side. Left hand down, right arm up. Good, back to center. If you wanna practice your crow pose, you can. You could also skip it and go to child's pose. If you're practicing Bhakasana crow, plant your hands shoulder width, knees up high on those triceps. Stick out your chin, look past the edge of the mat and keep shifting the body weight forward. Your shoulders come past your fingertips. If you do have that block handy, you can stand on the block. Sometimes that helps just because it gets those hips up already even higher and your feet are already three inches off of the floor. And then maybe you can lift your feet off the block. Over time, you might even think about straightening your arms a little bit, but at first you can keep those arms pretty bent so you have that shelf for your knees. Good, nice, you guys. When you're done playing with it, we'll meet back in our child's pose where we started our class, just taking a couple breaths to reset there.
Now, setting up for dolphin pose. So grab onto the outside of your triceps. That's just to measure it out. You don't keep your hands there. Extend your forearms. So your elbows should ideally be still directly under your shoulders. Your palms are flat. Tuck your toes, lift your hips up in the air. Dolphin is light down dog with the forearms down. So you have to push the floor away. Make as much space between your face and the floor as you can to build that strength in your shoulders. Walk your feet together in the middle. You can keep holding here or lift your right leg up and hold. Five, four, three, two, a one, then switch legs, put that right leg down, left leg up, keep holding your dolphin, last five, four, three, two, and one. Child's pose, but this time bring your knees all the way together, arms alongside you, and let your shoulders relax and round forward. Come up to tabletop. Puppy pose, keep your hips over your knees, walk your hands forward and melt your chest to the floor. Maybe the forehead comes down or maybe your chin touches the ground, but think of pushing your chest towards the ground. So it's a big arch, it's a big back bend, but you feel that stretch here in your shoulders and your lats. Carefully walk the hands in and then meet in your downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana, resetting in your down dog. Lift the right leg up and open your hip and the leg. We don't do this that much, but for here, I want you to open the hip and the leg. You can stay here or flip your dog by bringing the right foot to the floor, pivot your left foot around, and then reach that right arm forward. So all 10 toes face the back of the room and your hips are up, kind of like a wheel pose, but your hand is the other direction. Then look down and flip it back around to your three-legged dog. Step your right foot between your hands, low lunge. Drop that back knee down, hold it there, low lunge. Your hands can come up to that right thigh, sinking into that left hip flexor. Just notice how it's feeling. We've done a lot already to warm up, but we are gonna do some deep stretches later that really focus on the quad and the hip flexor. So sink into that lunge. If you can, maybe lift your arms up, gaze up. Hands can be shoulder width, or you can even try pressing your palms together overhead. And then lower your hands to the floor for your half splits, straightening the right leg, flex your right foot, and fold over that right leg. Don't sit back on your foot, keep your hip over your knee. And now let's go back to down dog. Just re-bend the leg so you can put your hands down, reset in down dog. And we'll try that flip dog on the other side. Lift the left leg up, open the hip, bend the leg. And if you just want to stay here, instead of doing the back bend, you can stay here. Or you're going to reach that left foot all the way to the floor. Then you have to turn your right foot, pivot it, and reach the right arm up. So all 10 toes should be facing the same direction. Lift your hips high and reach that left arm forward. Then look down where you want to go. Bring your hand down, flip yourself back around to your three-legged dog. Step your left foot between your hands, low lunge. Drop the back knee down, start with the hands on that left side. Sink into that right hip flexor, that psoas on the right side. Maybe lift your arms, adding a little back bend. If it feels okay on the shoulders, pressing the palms together. Lower your hands to the floor or blocks for half splits. Straightening that left leg, flex the foot and fold forward. Good, re-bend that leg. Let's go back to our down dog. Reset there in your down dog. Lift the right leg up and step it forward to warrior one again. Virabhadrasana A. Ground down through that back foot, square your hips, and lift the arms. Interlace the fingers behind your back. Open up your chest. You can use a strap if you need it, and then bow forward. Humble warrior. Torso can be on the thigh or to the inside of it. Maybe starting to work your head closer to the ground right next to your foot. Come all the way back up to your warrior one. Lift your arms up. Open it up for 
for warrior two. Walk your back foot out a little wider. Line up your right heel to your left arch. So your left foot's parallel to the back edge of your mat. Your right toes still point forward. And you should have a bigger bend in that right leg. Looking at your right hand, flip the palm up. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale into modified or extended side angle. Right elbow to the thigh or right hand to the floor block. If it's okay on that top arm, you might extend that left arm forward for extended side angle, Uttita Parsva Konasana. Good, lift back up to warrior two. Inhale, reverse again. And as you exhale, come into half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. So your right hand, maybe it goes on the block, right? You can use that block under the right hand or you can go to the floor if your right hand reaches the floor. But you're trying to get your standing leg straight. Flex that left foot and keep the hip open. Aim for that left leg about parallel to the floor. You can look down, side, or up. When you move your gaze, that makes the balance harder. Carefully go back to warrior two, take a big step. Inhale, reverse again, reverse warrior. Exhale, windmill the hands to the front. Step your way back to chaturanga, low push up. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. Lift the left leg up for the other side. Step it forward to your warrior one. Starting with that back heel flat and the hips square to the front. Interlace, try to put the other thumb on top, the awkward way behind your lower back there. Open the chest, bow forward, humble warrior. Either resting on the thigh or starting to come towards the inside of it, bending that front leg a lot to get your head closer to the ground. Good, carefully come back up to your warrior one. And widen the stance, open your hips, your arms, warrior two, you're just in a beat, big bend in that front leg. Inhale, reverse, warrior. Exhale, modified or extended side angle. Left elbow to the thigh or left hand all the way to the floor or maybe on a block. And then that right arm, if it's okay on that top shoulder, you might try to reach it forward for extended side angle. Lift back up to your warrior two. Inhale as you reverse. Exhale, half moon. Ardha Chandrasana, left hand. On the floor block, six to eight inches in front of that left baby toe. Flex that right foot. Regular half moon, both legs are straight. And you're trying to open up that hip. Maybe focusing the eyes on something on the floor or maybe up at the ceiling. Take a big step back, warrior two. Reset the feet. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, windmill the hands down. Step back, chaturanga, low push up. Good, inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog. Lift your right leg up, step it outside your right hand for lizard pose. Drop your back knee down, untuck the toes. Make sure that foot made it all the way up there. If not, use your hand, scoot it up there so that knee's over the ankle, and then you can come down to your elbows, or you can use your blocks if you have it. Sometimes one elbow can touch, or maybe both. If you can't get your elbows down, that's okay. Just get as low as you can. Press up to your hands, if you were on your elbows, turn your right foot out 45 degrees, turn it to the side. So your knees point in the same direction as the toes. Put your left hand on the ground and twist your right arm back. And you can hold here or try to grab that back foot going for that quad stretch, pulling the heel towards you. Let go and just go back to down dog. Reset in your down dog. Then we'll switch sides, lift the left leg up, step it forward outside that left hand for lizard. Drop the back knee down for the first pose, all five toes point forward, knee over the ankle, hands, elbows, or blocks on the inside of that left foot. Stretching into that outer hip.
Press up to your hands, turn your left foot out 45 degrees to the side, right hand plants down and twist your left arm back. Holding there or maybe grabbing that back foot and pulling it in, left hand to right foot, stretching the quad of the back leg. Good, let go of the foot, step back to your down dog. Lift your right leg up, step it forward, warrior one. Virabhadrasana A, inhale the arms up. And this time we'll go right to that warrior two, open up the feet a little wider, Virabhadrasana B. Inhale as you reverse, exhale back into half moon. So right hand on the floor block, but this time we'll add a variation. You can stay here in the traditional half moon or come into Shopasana, bend the left leg, See if your left hand can find the outside of the ankle. Kick your leg back. Push your chest forward. Kick the leg back. They have to counterbalance each other. It's like dancer pose turned on its side. If you can't reach the foot, you could still bend it and reach towards it, or you can stay in that regular half moon. Good. Let go. If you are holding it, everybody straighten it out. Take a big step back, warrior two. Straighten your right leg. Walk your left foot in one or two inches. Shift your hips back and reach forward for triangle. Trikonasana, right hand on the shin or the foot, or maybe on your block. Look up towards that top hand if you can. Create length through both sides of the waist. Good, lift back up to stand. Adjust that back foot, walk it back out and re-bend your front leg back to warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, windmill the hands to the front and step back, chaturanga, low push up. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Lift the left leg up, step it forward for warrior one. Just inhale the arms up, we're only here for a breath. And then we open it to warrior two by walking that foot out wider, opening the hips. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, half moon. Left hand down on the floor block. Remember, you can stay here or bend the leg and see if you can find that foot for Shopasana. Again, it should feel like dancer pose turned on its side. Push your chest forward. The more you kick the leg back, those will counterbalance each other. I like to keep my eyes on the floor for this one. If you're holding the foot, let go. Straighten that leg out. And then take a big step back to warrior two. Good. Once you get there, straighten your front leg. Walk your right foot in just a little bit. Shift your hips back. Reach, reach, reach. And then place that left hand on the leg or on a block. Right arm straight up to the ceiling. Try to be flat on both sides of your body like a painting between two panes of glass here. Good, come back up, adjust that back foot and go back to your warrior two. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, windmill the hands to the front, step back, chaturanga, low push up. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Step or hop both feet to the front of the mat. Bend your knees, roll yourself up to stand. Good, let's face one of the long sides of the mat, feet parallel. Just bring your hands to your lower back. Take a little baby back bend, looking up and fold forward. Prasarita Padachanasana. Walk your hands through your legs and try to fold deeper here, stretching into the backs of the legs. Now walk your hands forward. We played a little bit with this side lunge last week. So same thing, turn your left foot out, walk your hands to that foot and then slide that right leg away and flex the foot. Try to wiggle your right leg as far as you can. You might not get the left heel flat yet. That's okay, right? If your heel's off the ground, that's all right. Just keep your hands on the floor. But if your heel is flat, you might be able to get your hands off of the floor and bring your hands to prayer. So you're sinking your hips down, but they're not actually touching the floor, right? They're just kind of hovering there. It should feel like a prayer squat on one side, a malasana, with a straight leg out to the other side. Now go the other way. 
Walk your hands to the right, drop your butt down, right? Right foot's turned out 45 degrees, either hands on the floor or in prayer. Left leg is out straight with the foot flexed. So you should feel a little stretch in your hips here. Good, back to center. Straddle split or frog. If you're coming into frog, you come down to your knees, slide your knees apart, flex your feet and come onto your elbows. So frog is just straddle splits with the knees down, right? Still stretching the inner thighs. If you want to do the straddle, you walk your feet out as wide as they'll go. And then same thing, try to come down to the elbows. For the standing version of straddle splits, the feet stay flat. Wherever you're at, just breathe, create a little more space here in the inner thighs. Now come back up to your hands. If you're in straddle, carefully toe heel the feet in. If you're in frog, tuck your toes and lift your knees and try to meet back about where we were before for that straddle forward fold. Bend one knee at a time, move your hips side to side, shake it out. Good, bend both knees, flat back, hands to hips, slowly stand up. Step to the front. I'm just gonna back up so you guys can see me. Standing number four, hands to prayer. Right foot across, making that figure four. Bend your left leg. See if you can get your elbows or forearms on the shin. And maybe for today, just stay here working on the balance, right? If you wanna put your hands on the floor and you know the arm balances, you're more than welcome to add that in. Good, shake it out, switch legs. Left foot across, flex the foot, bend your right leg. Focus your eyes. It's a balancing pose and a hip stretch at the same time. Good, release. Dancer pose, Natarajasana. Left arm reaches up, right hand. You can go inside or outside of that right ankle. Slowly lift that leg up, finding your balance and back bend at the same time. Good, release, switch sides. Right arm up, left hand to that left ankle, and then slowly lift that left leg up. Natarajasana, dancer pose. Nice, release. Meet at the top of the mat if you're not there, bringing your feet together and your hands to prayer position. Stand up nice and tall. Take a couple deep breaths to reset. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, step back to plank and lower to the floor. All the way down. Good. Bring your right forearm in front of you to kind of prop you up. We're going to do half bow. So it's basically like dancer pose. Left hand, grab for the outside of that ankle. Flexing the foot. Then push into this hand, lift your chest, kick your leg back. You can keep this hand down or you can extend it and lift that right arm and lift your right leg, but straight. So it's half bow pose, Ardha Dhanurasana, basically just doing one leg at a time. Good, release and then try the other side. Bring your left forearm in front of you. Take your right hand back, grab that right ankle and flex the foot. And first just push into the forearm, lift the chest and kick the leg back. And maybe hold there, or if you wanna hover that left arm and left leg, lift that up as well. Good, release. Now we'll try both legs. So bend the legs, try to grab the outside of the ankles. Knees and feet about hips width, kick back through your shins and lift the chest. Dhanurasana, bow pose. Good, release, let go. Bring one ear down and just kind of windshield wiper your shins side to side. Press it all the way back to a child's pose. Reset your spine. When you're ready, come into your downward facing dog. Lift your right leg up and bring that knee forward for pigeon. So right knee's gonna go behind that right wrist. Slide that left leg back. Now start with this right foot close to you. If this bothers your knee, you can also lay on your back for a lying down number four, figure four stretch. 
But if you can, when you're pigeon, take your left hand back and try to grab the left foot and pull it in. Sometimes people can spin the fingers forward. I'm going for the inside of my foot and pulling it in. So I'm going for that quad stretch again. We've done a few different variations of quad stretches today. It's kind of the theme, quad and psoas opening. Good, let go, square your hips. Now you can adjust that front shin if you want, but make sure your hips are on the floor and square. If not, use a block maybe under your hip or under your forehead if you need it. If you're moving that shin forward, still square the hips, flex that foot at most a 90 degree angle, but it can be anywhere in between, right? And then folding forward. And you should feel it in the hip, not the knee. If you feel it in the knee, bring your foot closer to you again or lay on your back for that figure four or lying down number four stretch, just like standing. Walk your hands in. Let's go back to down dog. You can shake out that right leg, opening the hip, or maybe a vinyasa, whatever helps you to reset there. And then we'll meet in down dog. If you're on your back though, for that lying down number four, you can switch sides. If you're doing pigeon, lift the left leg up, bring that knee forward and start upright first, right? So slide that leg back, square your hips. It's easier to do the quad stretch if you keep this left foot close to you. Left hand on the floor to help you balance. Right hand reaches back and go for the inside of the foot and pull it in. If the shoulders are allowed, some people kind of turn their hand on the foot so the fingers point forward, but that's more of a shoulder stretch as well. But I want you to get that quad stretch, pulling the foot in. Good, then when you let go, square your hips, maybe adjust the shin forward or back or lay on your back if you need to and then fold forward and grab any props if you need them on this side. It might be different, right? Doesn't always exactly line up. Forehead down, relax your neck, relax your arms, and create space in that left hip. Okay, walk your hands in, last down dog of the class. So step back, shake it out. If you want three-legged dog or vinyasa, eventually just meeting in your last down dog so you can kind of check in, see how it feels compared to the beginning. Good, have a seat when you're ready. So we're gonna work on half hero's pose and then we're gonna work on full hero's pose, which is why I have the block handy for when we get to full hero's pose. So for half hero's pose, I'm gonna start with the right leg straight. I'm gonna lean over to my right hip so I can bend my left leg. Now I have to use my hands because I've got like, you know, muscular calves, move the calf out of the way. So I take my hand, I kind of roll it, roll the calf out of the way so I can get my knees as close together as possible. Now I want the top of my foot on the floor where my imaginary shoelaces are. That would be on the floor. My knee is outside my hip. I'm not sitting on my heel. I'm sorry, my heel is outside my hip. I'm not sitting on it. Now, if you can't get your butt to the floor, take your block and sit on your block, right? That's why I said you could also use a pillow or books or something to sit on here if that's better for your knee. If it hurts your knee, don't do it. You're definitely gonna feel a stretch in the quad, right? The front of this side, that's different than pain in the knee. If you're on the block or seated on something, you're just gonna stay upright. For those of you that can get your butt to the floor without the block, you can start to walk your hands back and just kind of lean back like you're lounging here at the beach, right? And then maybe you could drop your elbows down and you're gonna notice it gets more intense. If that feels okay and you want a little more, you can try to lay all the way down 
and take your arms overhead. Just kind of stack your arms over your head here. It's okay if your knee comes off the floor, but I want you to try to keep your knees as close together as you can. So you're still squeezing those inner thighs close together. Try not to let the knees splay apart. Good, now if you lay down, just carefully reverse it one step at a time. Come up to your elbows, come up to your hands, and then undo that left leg, shake it out a little. So now we'll try the other side, see how the other side feels. So left leg stays straight, lean over to your left hip so you can bend that right leg. And then I like to use my right hand and physically kind of roll that calf out of the way to make it a little bit easier to get my knees close together. My heel is just outside my hip with the top of the foot down. If you need the block on this side, sit on the block. If you're propped up on something, don't lay back, just stay seated upright. But if you want to lay back and if your butt's on the floor, maybe you just walk your hands back. You could just go here, kind of hang out here. Maybe elbows go down and pause there, or maybe all the way down and cross the arms over your head. Again, my knee is lifting a couple inches off the floor, but it's still very close to my other leg. I'm still squeezing my inner thighs, so my knees don't splay too far apart. Then carefully come up if you lay down and shake it out. Now the full hero's pose is both legs together. So what I like to do is start more in a tabletop position and bring my knees together and then take my feet and separate them about as wide as the mat with my knees together. And then same thing, use both hands, move the calves out of the way and sit down between my feet, not on my feet. So for me, when I get to this full version, it's a little bit harder. So I sometimes take my block and I sit on my block. So if I'm on a block, I'm just gonna stay upright, okay? But if you're on the floor or close to the floor, you could just lean back a little and see how that feels. Or just like with the other one, you can come to your elbows or you can lay all the way down. Now again, your knees, they might lift up like that, but don't let them come apart, okay? Or as best you can, right? It may not be perfect, but the closer you can keep your knees together, the safer it is for them. Again, you should feel that deep stretch in the quad, but no pain in the knee. So if they come up, that's okay, but don't let them go apart. If you're sitting on something like I am, just sit up tall and over time you might use a smaller block or a smaller book and slowly your hips will get closer to the floor. If you laid all the way down carefully, come back up, meet in a tabletop. And a good way to kind of counter this, it's gonna sound weird, but just smack your shins on the floor like this. Just kick your legs out, good, and then have a seat. Nice work, you guys. So that's why we did some of that so as quad stretch before, hero's pose, virasana. That was our peak pose, right? Sometimes it doesn't have to be an arm balance or an inversion because that's a very deep stretch for most people. So let's stretch the opposite now, the backs of the legs. Sit up tall, fold forward. Paschimottanasana, seated, forward fold. And slowly come up, open your legs out into a V for your seated straddle splits. Wiggle those legs as far apart as you can. Upavishta Konasana. Flex your feet, take your right hand, try to grab your right foot or your leg, and then reach your left arm over your ear and create a nice side body stretch. Good, take it over to the other side. And as you come up, keep the feet flexed with the toes going straight up to the ceiling and walk your hands forward. Couple inches, couple feet, go as far as you can in your seated straddle splits. Walk your hands back in, shake out your legs a little bit, and then we'll roll down onto our backs, hugging the knees in, gently rocking side to side. 
and place your feet when you're ready, just on the floor. Open both arms out like a T. Cross your right leg over your left, all the way. So you're trying to stack the knees. Move your hips one or two inches to the right and drop your knees to the left. Coming into that spinal twist with the legs crossed. You can keep your gaze up or you can turn your head and look over to the right. Maybe close the eyes, relaxing here. Bring your legs through center, switching the cross of the leg. So the left leg crosses on top. Move your hips an inch or two to the left, and then drop your knees to the right. And if it feels okay on the neck, turning your head, looking towards the left. And again, closing the eyes, coming into our last pose here before Shavasana. Bring it to center. Uncross your legs. Wrap your arms around your shins. Curl up into a nice tight little ball. Give yourself a big hug and let it go. Coming into Shavasana, our final relaxation. Extending the legs out long and letting the feet fall open. Arms relaxing alongside you, palms facing up. Shoulders, try to shrug them a little further down away from the ears to help keep your neck long. And as you close your eyes, clear away all of your thoughts. Take a nice deep inhale through your nose. Exhale all the air out the mouth, letting it go and letting your muscles relax deeper into the floor. Slowly begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Start to bring some small movements back into your body. Maybe draw a couple circles with your wrists and ankles, moving them in both directions. Maybe gently move your head a little bit side to side. Anything that feels good to you. And when you feel ready, we'll reach the arms overhead, reach the leg long, create that nice full body stretch, getting as tall as you can. And hugging your knees into your chest, roll over to one side, coming into a fetal position. With the eyes closed, use your hands to help press you up into a comfortable seated position, sitting up tall, crossing the legs, bringing your hands together at heart center, Anjali Mudra, and taking a couple last deep breaths here, scanning the body, Noticing how it feels after your yoga practice today. Let's take one more nice deep inhale through your nose. Exhale all the air out the mouth, letting it go. Lift your hands to your forehead, your third eye center, and bowing forward. Namaste.